Hello Internet, and welcome to another episode of That's All I Have to Say About That Thai Thursday. As always, I'm your host, Stephen Mackey. Today we're talking about rubber, a commodity that's prices slumped in recent years. But don't worry farmers, it's rubber, it'll bounce back. Now the main problem with rubber is that while money doesn't grow on trees, rubber sure does. So there's market oversaturation. Although this definitely is not a new problem in Thailand, a country that produces, according to Markets Insider, 36% of global natural rubber. Now we put rubber in everything from our shoes to our food. I guess it gives it that nice chewy texture that you could only previously experience from gnawing on a tire. Now because of this one could guess that rubber is big business, except for the fact that there's a synthetic rubber, which Thai rubber is natural. In this world of natural rubber, Thailand, Indonesia, and Malaysia have formed essentially a very specific OPEC by meeting to debate on different strategies to get the price of rubber up, which is significant because together they control 70% of natural rubber production. This September it was reported by a reporter who makes eye contact with the camera like she's on a first date with it. Ministers overseeing the rubber industry from Thailand, Malaysia and Indonesia have met at an international tripartite rubber council meeting in Bangkok to discuss a plan to strengthen rubber prices for their respective countries. Thailand, Indonesia and Malaysia all met behind closed doors to figure out how to raise the price the world pays for natural rubber in a meeting that was mainly shrouded in secrecy because of the fact that almost nobody cared about it. That meeting did yield some interesting agreements though, specifically when it was reported that they agreed to increase domestic rubber use by 10% per year and correct the imbalance of supply and demand by implementing a supply management scheme. Now, a supply management scheme, for those of you who aren't fluent in ethically questionable business, is when you intentionally cut production to make your product more expensive. On that same note, increasing the domestic consumption by 10% sounds like a great plan to help the prices, but something that they probably couldn't do. Imagine if OPEC just released a memo to the world casually asking countries to use 10% more oil so that it could become more expensive. Now, before you laugh too hard though, according to writers, the Thai government did just increase the amount of rubber it's purchasing to increase the price of rubber. Unfortunately, despite all that effort and production cuts of 350,000 tons, the price didn't drastically change. The biggest recent boon to the price of rubber was, ironically, The last year has been one to forget for rubber farmers in southern Thailand. They've seen prices plummet, experienced drought, and now two major floods in just over a month. Unfortunately, the portion of Thailand designated for natural rubber production has been hit with multiple floods wiping out the crops. If you look at commodity charts from the website Trading Economics, that impossible to miss spike was when the floods wiped out Thailand's crops. And when Thailand recovered, it went back to being terribly priced again. Man, Thailand inadvertently can really control the natural rubber industry. And as a quick side note, you know who really hates that? India. Because this whole disaster in Thailand just wrecked their auto industry, with tire makers asking for government assistance, seeing that their margins were completely wiped out and drastically raising prices. Now the last problem here that has plagued the industry since 2011 when the price initially dropped is that the price of rubber is less than the cost of production. And this is especially alarming considering that it's coming from a country that somehow managed to make a functioning and fashionable wristwatch for less than a dollar. To be fair, this is not the first time a vendor in Thailand has told someone he's losing money on a deal, you're a very good negotiator. To put this in simpler terms, essentially what I'm talking about is, if I buy a picture for $5 and I sell it to you for 4 that is a terrible business model and if I keep doing that, I'm going to be losing money faster than a franchise saying they're setting their next feature in space. Okay, so this begs the obvious question. If you're losing money making rubber, why not, oh, I don't know, stop making rubber? 
Well, there are a few problems with that logic, but the main one is that rubber requires rubber plants, which means that even if you decide not to plant new plants, you already have crops from previous years growing. So you have to use them to either produce rubber at a loss or sacrifice your entire investment and miss out on some money. And it takes a rubber tree about 25 years to finally produce. Even worse, when a natural disaster wipes out your crops, the price goes up fourfold, incentivizing you to get back into that industry. Also, you own a bunch of farmland with rubber trees. It's not as though you're going to suddenly start your own tech company. So how are people getting out of this predicament? Well, one major way. Thailand is going to cut as much as 50% of 400,000 rye or 160,000 acres a year by the first quarter of this year. Now this would help cut supply by 5% and should help support the price. And if that doesn't work, well Thailand has another equally valid solution. Double down and hope second time's a charm with an additional 3 billion baht going towards doing whatever the opposite of protecting is for an additional 300,000 rye or 48,000 hectares of rubber tree land. Overall this is expected to decrease supply by 20% this year and get those prices back up. Now, while no economists are sure whether this will work or not, I can report that, according to commodity predictions from Trading Economics, it does appear that by the end of 2018 the price of rubber will continually steadily drop, at which point, by the end of 2018's fourth quarter, it will have fallen in value 43%. Although the capitalist in me is definitely showing right now, with the belief that, on aggregate, unless an unpredictable event happens, the market knows best. So, if you're a rubber farmer, I personally would recommend you take advantage of that government program and get into growing other things, especially because Bangkok is doing everything they can to get you to start producing palm oil instead, believing that it is a much more desirable industry to be a prime producer of. I'll be keeping my eye on it, and if anything interesting happens in the rubber industry, I'll let you know. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hey YouTube, I have a line account right here and my ID is Person of Interest 101. Also, my QR code is right here. So feel free to reach out if you have any suggestions for future episodes. Make sure to remember to subscribe by clicking here and checking out some of my previous episodes of Thai Thursday by clicking here. Oh, and this is pretty cool. You can click here and YouTube will use its special top secret algorithm to suggest a video of mine that they think you'd like most.